In the previous lecture, we defined the following two formulas using simple algebra. Now we're going to derive them using integral calculus. So let's look at the following two assumptions. Assumption number one, our motion is under constant acceleration, and assumption number two, at time not at our initial time equals zero, our initial velocity is represented by v not or v initial. Now, let's begin by defining what our instantaneous acceleration is. Recall that definition of instantaneous acceleration is given in the following formula, by the following formula. Our instantaneous acceleration is equal to our derivative of the velocity function with respect to time. So A equals the ratio of infinitely small change in velocity divided by infinitely small change in time. So let's rearrange this formula by bringing our dt to the A sign. So we get A times dt equals dv. Now let's take the definite integral of both sides. So if we take the definite integral of this side, we take it from t naught equals zero to t. And if we take the definite integral of this side, we take it from v naught to v. Now, let's actually take our integral. Let's uh, evaluate the integral and we get the following um, formula. a times t from t naught to t equals v, v naught to v. So let's actually uh, distribute the t naught and t and v naught and v, and we get a times t, our final, t final, minus a times t naught, our t initial, equals v final minus v initial. Now, notice by assumption, our t naught equals zero. So a times zero is simply zero. This term cancels out, and we get a times t equals v minus v naught. So, in a final step, we rearrange, we bring the v naught over, and we are left with our formula that we wanted to derive. So, the final velocity of the object equals the initial velocity of that object plus our constant acceleration times our time, the final time. Now, let's move on to the second formula. How do we derive the second formula? So we begin with the same assumptions, and now, instead of using our definition of instantaneous acceleration, we're using our definition of instantaneous velocity. So instantaneous velocity, or simply velocity, is equal to the derivative of our displacement function with respect to time. So once again, let's begin by bringing our dt over to the velocity side. We have velocity times dt equals dx. Now, let's take the definite integral of both sides. So our left side, we take it from t initial, t naught to t, and the right side, we take it from our x initial, our initial position, to our final position. Now, let's actually evaluate, the, or actually before we evaluate the integral, let's replace this velocity with our formula obtained from our first part. So, we take this entire formula and plug it into our velocity and we get the following term. So in the in the next step we actually have to distribute this integral to this uh, variable and this integral to this variable and then we could evaluate that after we uh, after we evaluate we get the following result. So our v naught times t plus a times t squared divided by 2 and we take it from t naught to t. And likewise, there's a 1 here, so that simply becomes an x. And we take it from x naught to x final. So let's distribute this t naught and t, t final, and our x naught and x final. And we get the following result. Now, um, this actually should be a minus. Uh, let's make it a minus. Okay, now from our assumption, our t naught is zero. So any term that has t naught will cancel out. So we are left with v naught times t plus a times t squared divided by two equals x final minus x initial. So these two terms get canceled out. We rearrange our equation and we get our final position x is equal to our initial position x plus v initial times t plus 
a times t squared a times t squared divided by 2. So this is exactly equivalent to this formula here. And this gives us the final position of our object moving under constant or uniform acceleration.